Hello and welcome to Oil Solutions Group uh, offer of managing frying oil. Today we will be uh, joined by Corby Stowe, uh, who will lead us through the presentation and a little bit of a background on Corby Stowe includes uh, Corby is just well known in the industry uh, as, as a subject matter expert of all things oil management, coming from several segments in the industry, including the passive filtration um, expertise to mechanical filtration and, and all medias uh, that are used in the, in the scope of, of managing cooking oil. Corby is well, well versed in. He's been featured as a subject matter expert in several uh, several magazines, including Food Service Equipment Magazine, QSR, Nation's Restaurant News, and has also been hosted as a webinar subject matter expert at Fishnick um, multiple times. We welcome Corby and, um, and hope you enjoy uh, some of the expertise that Corby can lend to you and your oil management program. Corby, take it away. Right. Todd, thanks for that really nice intro, my friend. I really appreciate that. Um, happy to be here today and um, appreciate everybody joining us and let's start talking frying oil management. Um, why is oil management important? Well, just a couple pictures here. The one on the left explains why this would be costing you money and why you'd be serving your guests bad quality. The picture in the middle shows good oil. You're serving your guests really good fried food product and it's not going to be costing you money because your oil is going to be lasting longer. So let's talk about it, uh, quality and economics. So quality is a, the big part of this. You wanna always optimize, you know, provide optimized food and oil quality at all times for your guests for an en enhanced guest experience. You wanna serve the consistent fried food products. If you have multiple outlets, you want every outlet to be consistent. Um, this will give you a repeat business it also keeps the revenue and it also keeps your reputation and trusted brand um, going across um, as, your, as your dining establishment. It's something to think about on the quality side of this. As you're opening back up after a year and a half, you're gonna have some guests, maybe as early as this Memorial Day weekend or beginning of summer, whatever, that'll be coming out for the first time. They're expecting that quality to be there where it was before they la their last visit to your restaurant. So. If you're, as you're trying to get guests and trying to get the business going back up again, you're going to want to serve that very best fried food quality you can. Otherwise, they'll say, yeah, you know what? I haven't really missed anything year and a half. I just won't come back. So please keep that in mind. Make sure you're serving optimized food and oil quality at all times at all locations for your best and most enhanced guest experience. Now, economics, if you're not doing frying oil management right, you, you could be, you know, your, your food, your oil could be 10% of your total food costs, and that's astronomical. Um, money's tight in a restaurant. You have labor costs, you have food costs, you have utility costs, you name it. There's, these costs are constantly creeping up. So is the oil, price of oil. So this is middle of the page stuff we're going to be talking about. So you can quickly put those um, dollars back into your operation and to reduce those frying costs. It's one of the quickest and easiest ways to really make your profits increase. Okay, next slide. All right, so I'm gonna give you a high level view of some of the things that are chemical reactions and some of the things that happen during the frying process. And this kind of contributes to the enemies of oil. And so if you really have an understanding of what's taking place in a typical fryer at a given time of the day, um, you'll have a better understanding of what breaks that oil down and some things you can do to mitigate it. And so, a um, couple of things, you have some ambient things taking place, um, and, and these are all fixed constants. These are things that are fixed. They don't change when that fryer is on. So you have air from maybe the makeup air or the environmental climate control inside the back of the house, and that's going to create oxid oxidation and some of these off the undesired byproducts that break that oil down. You also have the heat. Um, you've got to have that fryer or something there keeping that fryer going, keeping that oil temp up. And so that heat over time is going to create those polymer, polymers that break the oil down. And then as you're actually cooking something, the moisture of whatever you're frying creates hydrolysis. And that's going to increase your free fatty 
um, acid value. So two things, even, even when you're not cooking something, even on an idle fryer, if that fryer's on, you're still getting the first two things, the air and the heat in play in an idle fryer that'll break that oil down. So let's talk about what these enemies of oil are and what we can do to mitigate it. So the most common types or the most common enemies of oil are gonna be carbon, water, air, soap degreaser, salt, and heat. So where you're gonna get carbon, let's use a French fry for a scenario for an example. So as that French fry is cooking, you're gonna get carbon. It's, a, it's a, basically a byproduct of the cooking process. And so as that French fry continues cooking, um, you get some carbon deposits and other products keep cooking, you're gonna get some par uh, caramelized polymers and all that still cooks and eventually it falls down onto the heat source of the fryer and becomes dark and burnt on black parts of the fryer in the fry pot. And so that really, as that carbon comes in contact with the oil, it really breaks it down. Um, you'll notice a good thing is when you, uh, maybe when you're changing the oil, you'll see the, how the heat source is covered in like black creosote. And you'll also see that uh, kind of that orange tinted ring where the oil line level was. That's a caramelized polymer and all that's detrimental for the oil. And that's where you get your carbon. Now your water, obviously you have hydrolysis, as I mentioned before, whatever you're cooking, you know, you're going to get that water build up in the oil. But where you can really hurt yourself is, is maybe when you're boiling a fryer out or you're washing some components, your filtration equipment, you always want to make sure you're drying that, um, all that water, keeping it dry, keeping it out of, out of the fry pot as much as you can to, to mitigate the water component of the enemy oil. Air. All right. So, you know, again, when your makeup air is on from the hood or your, your HVAC vents are going, that air, even ambient air, is really impacting the oil, it's speeding up that oxidation process, increasing those total polar materials, TPM counts. Um, just, just be mindful that's taking place. Um, soap and degreaser, um, a lot of times you'll, you'll want to clean that fry pot and the filtration equipment with soaps and degreasers. Just be mindful that soaps and degreasers are surfactants, they do leave a film, and if you don't wash or neutralize those when those films come in contact with the oil, they will cause some foaming and cause that oil to really break down. Plus your products, if you're cooking the products in that foaming oil, they're gonna be very undesirable in taste and color and appearance. Now salt, you know, you, a lot of times you'll, you'll hang fry baskets over the frying oil and you'll salt and season those, uh, salt and season the product and the baskets over the oil. Look, try not to do that because all that salt and that seasoning is going right into the oil. That'll really turn it dark. It chemically reacts with the oil, turning it dark. And so you're going to think that oil is bad a lot sooner. So um, just, just refrain from doing that. And then heat. Well, obviously, you've got a heat source in the fryer. So you, you want to make sure that that heat um, is within desired range of the manufacturer's uh, recommendations of fryer. Ideally, the cooking temperature of oil is 350 degrees. So um, anything above 350 you really will you know, break that oil down from the heat. So make sure you're, you're always at 350. Um, so let's talk about what we can do to mitigate these enemies of oil. Um, you always wanna keep those fryers clean and free of carbon. And the way you can do that is just keep those fryers boiled out, keep them cleaned out. Um, you always want those fryers showroom clean at all times. A really quick, easy thing. When you see skimmed oil, you know, skim your oil surface constantly. So whenever you see some par particles and crumbs and French fries and whatever else is cooking and just floating on the surface, well, they continue to cook. And that's where you're really getting that carbon from. So just keep skimming that oil surface constantly. Anytime you see it floating, something floating, just skim it out and get it out of that oil. And you want to boil out your fryers. Um, so make sure you're boiling out. As, as needed, when you, you know, you see it, notice it's, the fry pot's really dark, just make sure you're keeping those fryers clean, just boil them out as often as needed. Now filter oil daily, um, you, you wanna filter the oil to get rid of all the particulates that fall down and get on the heat sources and get down the bottom of the cold zone of the fryers. Just keep that oil clean and free of sediment at all times. For every filtration you skip, you actually can lose one to three days of oil life by not filtering. And then as far as air, um, just keep those fryers covered or not in use. 
um, when the fryers are off, just keep them covered. Sometimes the fryers will come with uh, the covers from the manufacturer. And if you don't have that cover, you can always use a hotel size sheet pan or whatever to keep the fryers covered. And just ensure that equipment is clean and dry after you've washed it. So that way you're not having the water, you know, carry on over into the oil. Uh, if you can help it, try not to use soap or degreaser on the equipment. Just use hot water only. And again, never season or bread or salt anything over the frying oil. Try to find a place over to the side to where you can always salt and season the products and uh, typically when they're finished. Thermostat calibration, this is how you can really mitigate and, and keep the severity of the heat impact of the oil. So maybe a good example would be you've got a, a fryer that's not recovering temperature and you're just busy, that back of the house staff is just cranking out product and you know, you're, it's taking, the fryer's taking forever to recover. And maybe you crank that thermostat, if it's a manual knob, you crank it up to 400 degrees. Um, problem with that is you've got an overshoot that really goes above 400 degrees and it takes a long time for that to get back, the temperature to get back down to 350. You're just scorching that oil and you can actually scorch oil in as little as a few hours or maybe even a shift change. So just be mindful to calibrate that thermostat and keep that frying oil in that 350 degree range. A, a big thing is, is just, you know, know when to discard that oil. Um, this is where you get into a lot of uh, frying operations don't know exactly when to discard the oil. So it's really helpful to have an oil tracking sheet to know what you're doing and have your team members dialed in. Track that oil life with, uh, here, with a uh, tracking sheet, a spreadsheet. Here's an example. Just uh, is something you can create. We can create, even help you create it. Um, just list your fryers, how many fry pots you have, and just list typical days of oil life. And just uh, a yes or no, how does the oil color look? Has the fryer and the oil been filtered? Yes or no? Just some basic things to help you and the team to be really in dial in, in, in tune with where your oil is while it's in those fryers. And it'll go a long way as long as you know exactly where that oil life is. And, and ensure and making sure that they're in compliance with uh, filtering the fryers. Okay, so, you know, to really have a good frying oil management program, having mechanical filtration equipment is optimal. Um, and that gives you the ability to really remove the debris out of that oil by filtering it. Um, you, maybe you're cone filtering. Maybe you're still filtering with a, with a stock pot. Okay, you know what? That, that's hot, dirty, and dangerous. But if that's all you have, that's all you have. You can still follow some of those basic, um, just, just develop a, a oil management plan by just mitigating those impacts of the oil, you know, the enemies of oil. And you can, it'll still give you one or two days of oil life, keeping your fryers clean, just um, covering them up and not use just some little accumulative things really help out. But to really go that extra uh, notch up in a frying oil manager program, you really want mechanical filtration. And you've got a portable option here. Maybe if you don't have a filter machine, you can get a portable machine. Um, and then if you uh, have built-in filtration, then it's all self-contained and that's just an easy, quick way to filter as well. But having mechanical filtration is ideal. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, you know what? I'm still cone filtering. I really don't want to put $2,500 into a you know, a portable machine or upgrading fryers to where you have the capability or the access to built-in filtration. Um, just know as the oil goes up in price and look at this as a safety aspect, it, it's really doable. Um, getting a filter machine, that $2,500 filter machine, you're going to recover that ROI and I'm seeing it right now um, in, in, in out in the field as we put a portable machine or maybe if the uh, fryers are upgraded to uh, built-in filtration, that ROI, especially on a portable machine, I'm seeing that in six, eight, 12 weeks at the highest, at the highest on a return on investment. So it's totally doable. Um, but having mechanical filtration really gives you the option to filter the oil in a safer way to remove all that particulate. All right, so two types of uh, filtration. You have passive filtration, which removes that physical, the physical compounds such as the, the sediment, 
all those particulate crumbs and, and things like all those French fries and pieces of chicken and typically pass a filtration and remove that to a certain classification size. And that's really how you clean that oil. And some examples of that would be your, your paper, a, you know, maybe a stainless steel type screen filter or master fill fabric filter. Um, again, a cone filter, a china cap, anything that removes, that will physically remove those uh, particulate and crumbs. An active filtration, this is what really moves those liquid solubles um, to lower the free fatty acids. Those things you can't see in the oil, um, you, you know, there's some certain things that remove those chemical properties of oil that clear it up and make the oil last longer. Some examples would be Magnesol, um, that's a magnesium silicate, some bleaching earth, um, got several varieties of that, silica gel. And, and these do a good job of in removing all those things you can't see out of the oil. Um, the total polar materials, free fatty acids, they really slow that breakdown of oil. And you can use that in conjunction with a passive filtration media, paper, or the, especially the master fill. And it does a really good job. All right, so here's where the really, the rubber meets the road in the frying oil management program, just knowing when to discard that oil, knowing when to say goodbye. So here are three jars, and on the left you have a you know clean brand new oil. In the middle you have you know your good range of oil, which is optimal for frying you know your optimal fried food products. And then on the right you have bad quality oil. So um, a very common method. And we're going to be talking about some methods to test and check your oil, but a common method would be this color tube kit. They're, they're almost everywhere. You can get them from your broad line, broad line distribution, maybe your oil supplier. But checking that oil, you just, you know, you filter your oil and then you use a color tube kit. You pick up a sample of oil and compare it between the good oil tube and the bad oil tube. And typically, this is within your specifications of oil from that manufacturer. So as long as that oil is, lit, is not too light, not too dark, you're in your acceptable range. That's just an easy, quick way of checking your oil. And you always want to, when you're using a color tube kit, you always check your fried food product, your finished product to get a good correlation of what that quality looks like for you. Now in the middle is a, is a Testo 270. Now a device like this is a scientific reading. And so the Testo will read total polar materials and total polar materials is the only scientific measurement of oil degradation and it measures in percentages. So if you're um, and anything below 25% total polar material is acceptable and anything above 25% total polar material is unacceptable. And in a lot of countries, um, it's, uh, you know, they, they will suggest that, you know, that oil is not fit for consumption. So, um, and there are some regulations in other countries uh, banning you from serving your customers are cooking in oil above 25% total polar materials. But this is a good way to really check it. On the right, we have the free fatty acid strips. Um, those are really common out there as well. You do have to have some other components of this. You have to have a color chart to really compare, you know, the, what that looks like. And, th and the, the test strips, they measure free fatty acid counts. It's basically maybe like a litmus type test. And so you, you know, just dip that into the oil and you compare it to the color chart and see where you are of color. The only downside of this is you absolutely have to have, you know, follow in a strict accordance how you store these strips, typically in a cool environment, such as a walk-in cooler and out of uh, light. So if you just keep them on a shelf, maybe in a hot kitchen near the fry cook line, they probably won't read as accurately. But these are three ways to really check your oil. Of course, you've got the, the fail safe measure of just checking your finished fried food product, taste, color, and appearance. But either way, always filter your oil to determine your discard point. You don't want to, um, if you if you discard your oil too soon, you're really, you know, you're, you're running up your frying costs. If you try to stretch that oil life too, you know, too far out, you're going to compromise food and oil quality. So just find that medium. And I'm going to talk about what that medium looks like here. So this is a oil life study. What I want to mention here is there's a sweet spot. So in this restaurant, we did a uh, test and an evaluation with a, a Atlanta-based QSR. 
and they're only getting three days of oil life. So on the left, you have brand new oil. On that left jar, you have brand new oil, which your products will look light and clear, and you know, they'll taste pretty light. But in the middle jar is optimal oil, and that's called the sweet spot. So the sweet spot is where you get the most desirable and optimized fried food products that'll come out of the oil. And that taste, appearance, and smell, that's where you wanna be is right in that sweet spot. And then on the right is the oil that's that would be at the point of discard, and that's where you're not going to really get the quality. So before we intervened with this restaurant to help them develop an oil management plan, they're only getting three days of oil life and only a one-day sweet spot. So after we worked with them for a couple of weeks, they went from three days all the way out to seven days, and their sweet spot was extended to all the way to five days. So that's huge. That's really incredible. So instead of one, two, three out the door, you know, they go, they go for a full week. And if you're now, if you're paying a, you know, a dollar a pound or paying $35 for a jug of oil, that's huge savings. And this particular location, we worked with them and they're saving nearly $9,000 of oil savings. And that's absolutely, I mean, completely doable. Um, again, the, at the beginning of the presentation, we were, you know, we were discussing the economic side of the frying oil management plan. This is it right here. This is what you look like before and after when you develop an SOP and put a frying oil management in place, plan in place. You can, these are real numbers and they're very easily to attain by developing habits, routines, filtering, sticking to a plan and knowing when to discard that oil. All right, so here's some products that that we provide and here are some things we do at Oil Solutions Group to help develop a plan. We have tools, we have the knowledge to put in place to help you customize a food, a frying oil management program for your frying operation. We have filtration units, which are known as the Armadillo series filter machine. The Armadillo comes in 60, 90 and 120 pound capa oil capacity for machines. Now it's an NSF approved machine we have an eight gallon per minute motor on our machines. Most others only have a five gallon per minute motor. This is modular. You can take every component off of this machine to store it. And it's just, it's military grade. It's a great machine. Again, if you're thinking about going with a, you know, if you don't have a filter machine and you, you're needing one, we would, we would, can absolutely help you out. That ROI is very minimal right now. So, huge investment by going with a portable filter machine. Our master fill filter is the heart and soul of our, uh, actually our filtration um, components. What master fill does, it's a reusable filter. It's a reusable fabric filter, lasts for one week and you cannot tear it, cannot poke a hole in it. So it's basically indestructible. A lot of times people want to poke a hole in the paper to get the pump flowing faster. <clears throat> but uh, all you do is scrape the filter after you've you scrape the top part of the master filter or after you filter and just scrape it off. It saves time and labor. You're gonna have you can also reduce your daily oil risk discard. You're not getting this master fill doesn't saturate with oil like paper does. So you're not throwing one to three pounds of oil every day, just like you would paper. So daily oil savings. It also filters all particulate out of the oil down to the size you know, of have a half micron. So you're gonna get that optimized food and oil quality. Um, it's just a great filter all around. <clears throat> we have filter powders. We also have boil out pods when you're cleaning those fryers out. The boil out pods are really neat. Um, you just, it, they come in prepackaged eight ounce pods. You just drop that pod into the oil with your fry baskets and, or I'm sorry, in the water when you're boiling it out, it dissolves. It does a great job of cutting that carbon and degreases the inside of the components of the fryer. It's really easy doesn't foam over, saves a lot of time and labor as well. And then most importantly, we have the industry consulting experience. Uh, we've worked with all major QSRs, big, small, a lot of other types of uh, frying operations, whether it be commercial, non-commercial food service, QSRs, fine dining. We, we've worked with them all to help develop either frying, you know, oil management programs, SOPs, or any aspect of a a frying operation. We've worked with them. We've got that experience. We'd like to help pass that along to you to help you develop a frying oil management program and to put some SOPs in place that'll help reduce frying costs 
while optimizing food and oil quality as well. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, speaking with you on frying oil management today. I'm hoping we'll have the opportunity to work with you. Um, if we can help you out in any way, I've got, we have contact information here. We're glad to help provide samples or some basic, just answer basic questions, whatever we can do to assist you, just please let us know and uh, reach out to us. We're here to, to help you. We're anxious to get you up and running to help reduce those frying costs and optimize food and oil quality. And if you could just share your email, we'll re you'll receive a recap of this presentation along with a lot of different videos. We have some really neat stuff on our website at oilsolutionsgroup.com, a lot of how-tos, a lot of tips and tricks. We're always adding some different things on there, so please be on the lookout for it. And then there's our telephone number. You can always enter, you can always uh, reach out to me at uh, corby.stow at Oil Solutions Group, and I'm here to help you out. Thanks again, and uh, let's find out what questions everybody has.